Israelis mourned their departure from Gaza in 2005, and some thought the mourning would be over after the withdrawal. But this is Gaza today. Rather than bringing renewed security to Israel, today Gaza is a boiling pot of Islamic terror focused on Israel. CBN News followed closely one of the leading terror groups called Islamic Jihad and learned Islamic radicals now have greater, more powerful tools of terror than ever before. These Gaza-made rockets are being fired at Israeli targets just over the border. Added to the arsenal, Zilzal cordless roadside bombs activated by cell phones. And now, since the Israelis are gone, terrorists fearlessly train in the open. How to fight, how to patrol, how to crawl long distances and reach Israeli targets. These militants endure pain to build their stamina for what lies ahead. Now women are used more and given terror assignments. This woman demonstrates how to carry the explosive suicide belt around her waist. <laughs> Nafez Azam is one of the leaders of Islamic Jihad. Israel recently added him to its list of targeted terrorists, and with good reason. Azam says his total focus is not politics, but Israel's destruction, and he says he will never disarm. Here and everywhere in Israel, authorities are standing guard against terrorist attacks. But while some terrorist groups politicize their moves, members of Islamic Jihad remain focused on the war against Israel from their central training ground in Gaza. John Wagi, CBN News, Ma'ali Adamim, Israel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the news, by the way, uh, Hamas is uh, apparently overrunning Fatah. They, they're quickly taking control of that entire Gaza Strip. And from there, that uh, so-called Palestinian authority is going to begin to unravel. It's, it's a serious war going on, bloodthirsty war. Well, our next guest is a former Palestinian terrorist. He's now a born-again Christian. He's written a fascinating new book that uh, is entitled, quote, Why We Want to Kill You. <laughs> Will you please welcome back to the 700 Club, Waleed Shobat. It's good to have you back with us. See you again, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. It's a wonderful book. I congratulate you on it. Why Thank we you. want to kill you. You know, uh, the Western commentators say, well, these people are poor. They're brought up in, in uh, substandard conditions, and they envy the West, and they're angry because of the uh, Western affluence, and therefore they, they want to protest. Is that why they blow themselves up? If the reason for suicide bombing is poverty mm -hmm. and lack of um, hopelessness, why would you never find in the Palestinian areas Christians who commit suicide bombing? Mm -hmm. uh, the argument could be is, wait a minute, Christians are not accustomed to suicide bombing. Well, you have the second largest terror organization after the PLO is the PFLP, Popular Front to Liberate Palestine, mm -hmm. which is ran by a Christian terrorist by the name of George Habash. Yeah. Now, George Habash, his organization, whenever they need a suicide bomber, or they would use a Muslim, always, 100% of the time. The, the Hindus don't have suicide bombers, and the Buddhists don't have suicide bombers. That's a very good point. At a university speech, one professor objected to my speech. He said, it's, the reason for terrorism is poverty. So I asked in the audience, I said, do we have anybody from India? Mm -hmm. And one student said, I am from India. I said, do you guys blow yourselves up as a result of poverty in India? He says, you know, we have lots of poverty in India. None of us blow ourselves up. But they sure come from Pakistan, and they blow us up. <laughs> <laughs> you showed something in here, though. The promise of, uh, of Islam, and there are people in America that don't believe this. The 72 virgins and perpetual erection and all this stuff. What do they teach? What do they say that these young men are going to get? To Here's the element that Westerners don't understand why this jihad is going on and why they're killing and why they're dying. It's a message of salvation that Islam is offering. Christianity offers a message of salvation that by the death 
of one person, Christ, right. by the drop of his blood that we are saved. In Islam, there is no assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. The only way one can assure himself for salvation is by their own death, by the first drop of the blood of the martyr. Mm -hmm. He now can enter into heaven and intercede for 70 members of his family or her family. Mm -hmm. So when my cousin Ra'id got killed, my aunt Fatima had a wedding celebration. It's the it's, it's it's the law of opposite. Everything they, she had a they, your cousin was was he was killed as a, as a martyr, blew herself up, and they had a wedding celebration. Well, he was killed before well, he, he was he, he, he was shot. The Israelis figured out what he was going to do, and they, oh. he was killed. Right. And and my aunt Fatima had a wedding celebration. They, this is what the Westerners don't understand. The entire community mm -hmm. will come and join in this wedding celebration. The Friday prayer and the mosque will have a festivity for the death of the martyr. The house of the martyr becomes a museum where the entire community flocks to visit posters all over the streets for the martyr because now he's entered into paradise this is the problem with Islam is because Islam rejects the intercession of Jesus Christ however Islam does offer the intercession of the martyr the intercession of a sinner well now he gets 72 virgins pure black-eyed virgins who've never been touched by jinn or man. It's not just 72 virgins, Pat. Oh, it's not 72? It's 72 mansions. Oh, in, 72 mansions. In each mansion, mansion, 72 beds, and in each bed, 72 virgins. That math staggers me. 72 times 72 times 72. That guy's going to wear himself out for his... <laughs> <laughs> It really doesn't make any sense. But th the main issue is not that. The main issue is the salvation issue. All right. They want to be saved. And in order to be saved, you die. And because the Quran itself, it says, do not think that the ones who die in the cause of Allah are dead, but are alive with Allah receiving his blessings. You know, the people in America, you, you point out in this book uh, about how we have been duped by the so-called moderate Muslims. This is fundamental teaching of the Quran and of the, of the Islamic world, isn't it? You're not talking about some aberrant group. Absolutely. I mean, Jafar al-Tayyar, at the time of Muhammad, okay, mm -hmm. relative of the Prophet Muhammad, right. died in his suicide act as he attacked the enemy. And he, was, he had wings, they call him the Flying Jafar. So suicide missions was in the time of Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. Mm -hmm. The Americans are being duped with this moderate Islam. There are liberal Muslims mm -hmm. who don't care about fundamental view of Islam. But however, by far, uh, the, the fundamentalist view of Islam, Islamic as a religion, has always been taught to us as jihad. Because we, you know, when you read in the Bible about Antichrist, let's say, yeah. he honors a god of war. He honors a god of fortresses. That's right. In Islam, uh, Allah you know, is a god of war. Uh, he, he doesn't honor the desire of women. In Islam, they don't honor the desire of women either. So it's a very antichrist system. It attempts to change times and laws in the Bible regarding the antichrist system. And if you look at Islam,